What's up you guys? My name is Ariana and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my wigs on the sewing machine. It's a little bit different than making wigs by hand, so just pay very close attention and you guys will be just fine. The links to all the products used in this video will be down below in the description box. So if you are somebody who is interested in learning how to sew or making your own wigs, please feel free to check that out. Step one is putting your mesh dome cap or your lace cap on your canvas blockhead and getting your correct measurements. I kind of eyeballed it and messed up slightly, so my wig that I made is a little bit too big for my head personally, but I'm about to put up a photo of the references so you guys know the exact measurements that you need to do for your head. Also, the canvas blockhead needs to be a specific circumference size, so if you're a hairdresser and you're making wigs for clients or just for yourself, you need to measure the circumference of your head before you order your canvas blockhead. The next step is to take your sharpie and measure out probably one inch line, so like an inch in between. The reason why you want them to be spaced out like that is because if you sew with the sewing machine and you sew the bundles like right on top of each other, you're going to shrink the size of your cap and then you're not going to be able to fit the wig on your head. Also, you want to line up your frontal. I like to pull my frontal at least an inch in front of where the mesh dome cap ends and then braid the sides down so I can get the hair out of the way. And then you just want to pull the sides of the frontal straight down. You don't want to pull it back along the line of the dome cap because that will mess up the wig. To help draw your lines better, what I personally like to do is I will keep the sharpie in the same place once I'm on this portion of the head. And then I will just turn the canvas blockhead with my left hand. Once you get done with the curves, all you do is just draw straight lines across the top. This is the easy part. And again, I just eyeball these. Sometimes when I'm making wigs, I don't really use all of the lines that I drew, but they're just there to kind of help me. And the last line that you draw is the one across the back of the frontal. The hair we will be using today is from my website, arianalyf.com. If you are interested in purchasing bundles or wigs, click the link down below. Some of the tools that I'm using are a seam ripper, scissors, polyester or nylon thread, and whatever sewing machine you want to use. Mine was relatively inexpensive, about $80. Y'all, this step right here is probably the hardest part about making a wig. So what I'm doing is doubling my tracks. And to do that, you want to find the ends of the bundle that's like loose. And then you want to line them up together. And you want to put your sewing machine on, I, for my sewing machine, it's a five but it might be like a back and forth pattern. I don't know what you would call it, but basically it's like a back and forth stitch. And yeah, you just kind of want to like thug it out and sew them together to the best of your ability. Whenever you start, you want to sew forward and then reverse the sewing machine and then sew it back a little bit just to kind of knot what you just did and then go forward again. So you guys saw me do that at the beginning of the track and I also do it at the end right here. Again, this is the hardest part. It takes time. Please don't stab yourself. <laughs> Once you're done with the back and forth stitch, you can release the foot and then all you do is just cut it close to the track. You don't have to re-knot it or anything like that because the sewing machine already does that. When you're done, it should look something like this. Again, this is not my first wig. It did not look like that the first time I made a wig on the sewing machine, so practice makes perfect. The next step is to take your bundle and line it up with the lines that you drew on the dome cap. This again is hard as well. Since you have the dome cap and the bundle underneath the foot, it's kind of like very thick or dense. So it's like the sewing needle has to go through both of those materials to sew it into the cap. So most times it won't really move through the sewing machine like normal. So you kind of have to tug on the back of the dome cap just to get it to go in the direction that you want. Or you also have to like push it through with your hands. I'm also curving this part of it. And really just to curve, all you do is just kind of go slow and steady and you just turn the dome cap as needed. So don't go fast if you're a beginner. You also want to make sure that you kind of go back and forth over the track a few times at the beginning and the end of where you sewed it at just to make sure that it's secured on the cap. And again, once you're done, all you have to do is lift up the foot and then cut the thread close to wherever your wig is at. Once you have your first track done, you just want to take it off of the foot and then you just want to cut the track as close to the dome cap as you can without cutting the elastic in the dome cap. You will have some stray hairs that come off, but it's easy. Just pull them off. 
There will also be two threads at the beginning of the track that you were sewing. One is from the thread and the other one is from the bobbin on the sewing machine. And you just want to cut those two strings off. And then when you're done, it will look something like this. I want to make sure that I am as thorough as I can be, so I'm just going to explain this process one more time. When you first begin to put your track onto the dome cap, you want to sew forward and then backwards and then forwards again. What that does is it locks the track in place, that way even whenever you're combing your hair or tugging your hair or whatever you do in your spare time, it will not come off of that dome cap. And then you want to sew the track onto the dome cap like normal. Once you get to the end, you want to go forwards and then backwards and then forwards again. That way you will lock it in place. Once that's done, you take it out from under the footer and then you cut the two strings. Now we're at the top of the sewing machine where those more extreme curves are at. And again, if you are a beginner, slow and steady wins the race. You can sew a little bit at a time take your foot off of the pedal, turn the dome cap, and then continue sewing. That's really the best advice that I can give. Cause even, like I've made wigs before and even I go slow on this part because I'm trying to make sure that I keep it on the line that I drew. But also your wig is now becoming fuller and more dense. So it's kind of hard to continue to push all the hair out of the way just so you can get it onto the dome cap. The straight lines can be a little tricky as well because you just want to make sure that up there is as flat as possible because people are more likely to see the top of your hair versus the back. So you just want to make sure that the wefts are as flat as possible. Something else that is optional, you can do single tracks on the straight lines that you drew if you want it to be extremely flat. I just personally like very thick and dense wigs, so to each his own. But yeah, you just want to make sure that the wefts are as flat as possible. Even if you have to go over them a few times with the sewing machine to get it flat, you can do that as well. Once you're all done sewing the tracks onto the back, you want to take the wig cap and put it back onto the canvas blockhead and reapply your frontal. Now we're going to sew the frontal down by hand. I've never seen anybody sew the frontal onto a wig that was made on a sewing machine, like with the sewing machine. I don't know if you can do that. I'm pretty sure you can, but <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't recommend doing that, however, because I know that frontals kind of go bad in a way before the bundles do or the tracks only because the frontal sheds more. So if you want to have like a longer lifespan with your wig, I would highly recommend sewing the frontal down by hand. I will be using a curved needle as well as thread that you would use for a sew-in. It's different than the thread that I put through the sewing machine because the thread for sew-ins or for like real hair is a little bit thicker. You want to make sure that you do not, I repeat, do not sew your frontal down into your bundles because you're basically gonna have to ruin your entire wig just to remove the frontal to sew a new one on once you've worn your wig for a few months. Also, my memory card got full right here and it didn't really show you guys how I sew the frontal down, but I'm gonna show you guys in a later clip whenever I do the elastic band, how I sew and it's pretty much the exact same thing that I did on the elastic band that I did on the frontal. So you guys aren't gonna miss anything. After you're done sewing your frontal down, you want to flip the wig inside out and then pin it to your canvas head and then cut off the part of the dome cap where the frontal is at because you don't need that part. Once you have it all cut off, you want to cut off the extra little piece of the dome cap that is not the elastic and then you can put that part in the trash, but you want to keep the elastic band. I found this photo on Google. I don't know whose YouTube video this is from, but it looks like a screenshot. So if anybody knows the content creator who made this video, please tag them below. So when it comes to the elastic band, you see her measuring the back of her head from ear to ear. This is the same thing that you guys want to do. Once you get that measurement, you want to take two to three inches off of that measurement before you cut your elastic band. Another quicker and easier method that you can do is you can take the elastic band measure that from ear to ear and kind of pull it to see how comfortable you like your wig to fit and then just grab it with your finger and then cut right there either way works it doesn't matter which one you want to do it really just depends on your personal preference i'm just trying to give you guys options because i know every person is different the placement of your elastic band on your frontal is important as well what i personally do is i kind of like to place it towards the back of the frontal by where my ears would be but a little bit above my ears because the last thing you want is to have the elastic band sitting right there on your ears, rubbing your ears all day. And that's kind of my con about wearing an elastic band only because it hurts my ears and it like irritates them. But 
that is the placement it's kind of hard to explain exactly where it's at but i will show you guys kind of sort of at the end either that or i will insert a photo on what it looks like once you have threaded your needle you want to start by putting the needle in at the end of the elastic band pulling the thread to make sure that it's not tangled and what i do is i take the needle and i go under one of the two pieces of thread just to kind of knot it again and then after that you go through the elastic band and the front sole again and then i just wrap it through the thread twice so you kind of just like go around the needle twice and then pull it through because that creates a knot that's the exact same thing that i did on the front sole I personally like to knot each time so each time I go through I will wrap it around twice only because whenever I used to sew or do like cross stitching I would only wrap the thread around the needle one time and for some reason my frontals would always come loose so at this point I'm just gonna knot it each time I go through because whenever I do this method my frontals never come off and neither do my elastic bands also once you get to the top corner of the elastic band you're going to want to make sure that you sew that down very securely and then you're going to kind of want to do the same thing that you did on the sewing machine as far as going back and forth to secure your elastic band on the last stitch all you do is wrap it through twice and then pull it very tightly and that creates a knot and then yeah you're good then you want to cut off your little pieces of thread and then you also want to do the same thing on the other side of the elastic band this is the placement that i was talking about on the elastic band as far as where you want to put the ends at again it's a hard place to explain so just look at it and that's exactly where you need to put it when you're all done your wig should look something like this and now we're gonna go to the outro if you guys really enjoyed my video please feel free to give it a big thumbs up also subscribe to my channel if you are new follow me on social media turn on the notification bell and visit my website i love you and i will see you guys in my next video peace